decade old sark food bank established to ensure regional food security we have not been able to tap its full potential we need to address its operational shortcomings to utilize its reserve towards these ends we also need to have a specific mechanism to facilitate greater cooperation among our research institutions in agriculture and other related areas the two most dangerous maleases we face in south asia are poverty and terrorism to protect our social fabric our growth and development we have to cooperate and exert combined efforts to eliminate both from our region we also need to attune our attention to formally tackle the more sordid by products of poverty particularly the smuggling of narcotics fake currencies and most importantly the trafficking of women and children in bangladesh we are in the process of enacting a comprehensive law on trafficking to address the problem but trafficking is a cross border issue and more comprehensive regional guidelines would be beneficial to all therefore on sark level we propose the expansion of the scope of sark convention on preventing and combating trafficking in women and children which was signed in january 2002 the third decade of sark launched as a decade of implementation should encourage sark development fund with a few regional projects in its portfolio to undertake projects under its infrastructure and economic windows a larger and diverse portfolio of projects in sdf is critical to vindicate the trust goodwill and confidence of our people in the sar in fact the time is right for bold decisions to place the redeem our political commitment we may also take a deep look at the possibilities of a more engaged role of the overseas in uh, of the observers in sark with their knowledge and experience they can support a faster development process in our region mr chairperson the nations in south asia from the himalayas through the deltic plains to the islands in the indian ocean have a common destiny our progress and prosperity demand that we support and strengthen each other's capacities and commitments only then will we be able to fulfill the aspiration of our peoples therefore let a mutual commitment to share prosperity and support be our solemn pledge to them as we launch the 17th sark summit here in the picturesque island city of addu i thank you all thanks thank you thank you madam prime minister and thank you again for the very kind words to the people of the maldives the maldives and myself may i now invite the prime minister of the royal government of bhutan Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, from the people of the Mountain Kingdom of Bhutan, 
I bring to our brothers and sisters of the Maldives Islands greetings and good wishes. Despite the expansive space between us, the similarities we share are bringing our countries ever closer. Apart from the distinction of being the two smallest members of the SARC, we are bound together by an amazing range of circumstances and aspirations. We are equally challenged in the nurturing of our infant democracies just as our fragile ecologies are threatened in equal measure by the continuing rise in global temperature. Likewise, we are compelled to diversify our growing but vulnerable economies even as our GDP numbers are on the rise. In recognizing our own future as being conditioned by the prospects of the region, we find ourselves deeply committed to the process of unlocking the vast potentials of SARC. Therefore, it is with a deep sense of happiness that I welcome the mantle of SARC leadership being passed into the capable hands of His Excellency President Mohammed Nasheed of the Maldives. Supported by the youngest and first Lady Secretary General of the SARC, who too is from the Maldives, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that President Nasheed will take advantage of their combined youth and daring to bring fresh perspectives and dynamism to our association. On our part, Bhutan would like to offer the assurances of full support and cooperation. My delegation welcomes building bridges as the theme of the 17th SARC Summit. Constrained by restrictive laws and extremely poor connectivity, we are today the least integrated region in the world. Intra-regional trade is not more than 5% of our total trade volume, while cultural and other forms of interaction among our peoples are equally limited by this deficiency among others. Focus on bridging the gaps should therefore serve our region well. Excellencies, each of us in varying degrees has demands at home that make it difficult to spend time elsewhere. But to be able to come together as we have been doing for the 17th time is a remarkable testimony to our shared recognition of the promises of SARC. <clears throat> it also speaks eloquently of our respect for each other as neighbors. These offer the makings of great outcomes. Yet, we do share the feeling that our regional cooperation ought to yield more. Why is this so? Not the least of the reasons appears to be our failure to reconcile with geopolitical and historical realities. We have allowed ourselves to be guided by counsel and politics of the kind that dwell in the past while being fearful of the future. Good intentions are thus foiled or remain simply in documents. In effect, it is the lack of political will which holds us back. Coming in the way of substantive collaboration, this is stalling our progress as nations and as a region. It makes us guilty of depriving South Asia from the opportunity to flourish as a peaceful region and for its people to be free from the misery of poverty and fear of insecurity that millions must continue to endure. Yet, I do fully subscribe to the wisdom of being mindful of the historical process in the making of our individual nations in South Asia. But what I see in our history, geography and all such realities are more convincing reasons and opportunities for us to combine than the few that would act otherwise.